Hello and welcome to Destiny Digits. This is the birthday number for a number. This is the birthday reading. Sorry, for birthday number four. Uh, so your birthday number talks about a sub opportunity that you have and your life path is your opportunity. And so you can consider numbers one through nine as people, literal personalities. And so your life path is, is your main personality. And to support that energy in fulfilling its mission, this reading, your birthday reading, is another opportunity, another personality that you can tap into as you walk out your journey here on Earth. All right, fours. So fours, you are traditional. You are orderly. You're hardworking, persevering. You are, you know, so consider this when you're thinking about your life path. These are the energies that you possess to help you get through that, right? You're very helpful. Like people can rely on you. Um, you're a good teammate, good team member. Fours are unafraid to do the same thing every day, day in and day out, because they understand the benefit of the, you know, that all those small movements, those small moments, those mundane tasks are going to build something stable. Fours are builders, right? And so think about when building a home, how many nails does it take? A four has no problem with the idea of the amount of nails is required and just the the how monotonous it can be to continue to hand, to do the same task again and again because they understand that in the end you're going to have a stable structure right um so they're practical they're steady self-disciplined that is literally you as a four all right so first card that comes out we have traveler it says move in a new direction so think about the current energies that you are navigating through in your own story in any way do you feel like you have to make a change or a shift somewhere now this can be physical you know literally moving home or it can talk about a relationship it can talk about leaving something a habit a behavior a belief a mindset a way of thinking speaking or being um, a really, it can talk about many different things. So what is shifting? What is the new direction that is happening in your own story right now? Next, we have Shapeshifter. It says transform and unveil your gifts. And so this next venture that you are stepping into, you are going to be operating in a way that you haven't ever operated before because you are going to be applying your gifts. And so what are you aware of? What gifts do you believe you have? How are you tapped in and connected to spirit? Beneath Shapeshifter, we have Medicine Mother. Honor your inner knowing. Honor your inner knowing. Wow. And so fours, you totally could be old souls right? Uh, whatever knowledge you possess, whatever gifts you have, we have shapeshifter and medicine mother. And so this next direction, this next phase is about you leveling up spiritually and, and really understanding that this path, although human, the path that you are walking is about advancing your spiritual self, your soul self. And when you understand that, you will open up your arsenal of tools and gifts that you have. At the bottom of the deck, we had warrior. Be fearless and stand strong. Be fearless and stand strong. You know, in fours, I feel like spirit is just saying whatever is to come, whatever is about to come, whatever this change is, it is new. It is something you may not understand. It is something that may make you uncomfortable, you know, uh, but spirit is saying, please have no fear. Trust in you. Trust in what you have. Trust in your potential. Right. Fours. All right. 
So we have, I am kind and loving toward others while creating clear boundaries that protect my good feeling emotions. And so that comes out next to the traveler move in a new direction. And this talks about relationships. This talks about how we establish ourselves with others. So I'm kind and loving toward others, but you also create boundaries. So you're not afraid to say, hey, you know, I really prefer our relationship unfold in this way. This is how I feel about you, you know, and, and, but I, I, I prefer this, or this is what I need, right? Um, because whenever you're talking, when, when you think about a person, you don't want to drop vibrationally because of what they represent to you. And so in your connections, you want them to be healthy. You want to feel good about the people you're involved with. But that means that you have established feel good boundaries. You've set up a playing field for the best to to happen, right? And so maybe in past connections, your your space was was eroded. And so you're learning how to really you know, it says traveler, move in a new direction, but this new direction talks about you connecting with others in a way that promotes you as, as opposed to taking, taking away from you. You want to feel good in all that you are attached to in life. Shapeshifter, it says spiritual alignment puts my manifestation into motion. And so spiritually, this shapeshifter card, transform and unveil your gifts, this is going to put you on your path. And this is going to start your story into motion. And so possibly in life, many of the journeys and lessons that we've learned could have been karmic. You know, we could have been working through old patterns and behaviors, but now we are stepping into the next aspect of who we are, what we are here to do. And this is where we transform. Our transformation happens because we have energies that we can tap into. There's an eagle, there's a wolf. And so this is about instinct. This is about sight and vision, right? And so maybe you have the ability to see, maybe you can sense, you can smell, maybe you just know things. Your awareness is, 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 is being enhanced. Right? And so that is what the spiritual alignment is bringing to you. The fact that you can, you can see whether something is good for your journey, not good, whether that be a person, place, or thing. You just have an understanding of what you need to do, where you need to be, what's to come. This is what the spiritual alignment is for you. And so if you embrace this energy, look at this Queen of Wands in the center. This is the energy that sets off the whole story. This Queen of Wands has something in her hand. And I feel like what the Queen of Wands holds is what you hold. That's your gift. That's what you are coming to understand. And it is the spiritual alignment. It is you saying, this is me. This is what I have, right? And this is how I have to show up and play a role in the story. Now to the left of the Queen of Wands, how do we step into this Queen of Wands? We have the Fool card. This is about jumping in a new beginning. And so Spirit is saying, listen, you are getting a new beginning. And a warrior, that's twice we're talking about a wand and passion and fire. Just like the warrior has the wand, the Queen of Passion has a wand. So this requires you to have some oomph, to like have some charge in you as you move forward. This is all fire. This is all passion. And you need to go forward boldly, fearlessly in your power. But you also need to be very submissive to what's to come, kind of like this fool, you know, kind of careless, not really not having too many expectations, just jumping into the unknown in total trust. Now, we have the Six of Cups here also, and this is a card of past. This talks about something, you know, an innocence, a feeling that we can tap into of a time that was. Now, this time could have been literally in the life that we're living now, when we're thinking about our passion, our fire, what pushes us, what, when we're thinking about the, the energy that we give to life, where did we first get it? Where did we first feel it? What propelled us? What drove us earlier in life? 
where was our first passion? You know, when did we first feel alive in life? When did we first feel like ourselves? What were we doing, thinking, feeling, who were we with? It could mean that as the six of cups, <clears throat> you know, and then manifesting that into that energy from the past into present. It could talk about a person, a place or thing. It could be this life, a past life, a person, you know, but but there is a force, there is an energy that is connected emotionally to you, right? And, and it, it, it represents a time when you were able to dream, to think, and to wonder. And so the spiritual alignment is going to allow you to manifest from that space where you could dream in innocence and not have fear and not have blocks. It's taking you back to that space. And maybe that space will be triggered by a person. Maybe a person from the past could come back. Maybe the spiritual alignment can give you a vision of a past life. Maybe, you know, it could it could be many things, but nonetheless, it's really about the energy. It's about the innocence of something that was at another time that you were about to awaken again. Excuse me. <clears throat> so beneath the Queen of Wands, we have the High Priestess, right? And so this is about, although we are a physical being, this is about knowing that we are full-blown spirits with a gift that we can use called intuition. We can tap into this. And this High Priestess is totally tapped into spirit and knows things and understands things, right? And this is, she operates outside of the human, the five senses. She uses the spirit sense. And so medicine mother, honor your inner knowing that is totally aligned with the high priestess. You know, you have that within you for, you have this gift, this knowing, this understanding. And, and that is something when you see this queen of wands, the fire in her hands, that is what you possess. That is what you can use to really charge and grow and, and expand your story. We have, I let an inner sense of quiet. The high priestess doesn't speak, right? She's psychic. She's intuitive. She doesn't need to converse. She can literally sit in silence and tap in and know all without saying a word. I let an inner sense of quiet multiply each day as I strengthen my faith in the love of the universe. And so this is about being comfortable being quiet, being comfortable not being front and center. This is being comfortable being the receiver, right? This is understanding that when I turn myself down, it's because I'm allowing spirit, the divine, my connection to turn itself up. And it's in that connection. It's in my ability to surrender to that, that that, that the connection can strengthen and grow. But you have to make space for that in your life. You have to literally set time in life to allow this hap to happen. Um, this is not by, you know, this doesn't, it's not like I just think it and then it comes. This is more like I have 20 minutes of every day. I've decided to sit in this space in this way for this reason, right? Make space for this to come create the environment, begin to harvest this energy. And it is in doing this that you strengthen your own faith and you realize that love is surrounding you and is prevalent and it is, it is fluid and it exists everywhere at all times. And it makes life feel like the energy of the Knight of Wands. This is like going, like passion and fire and just in awe, in, in love with life, and just only seeing your dreams, your desire, right? It's, it's living in that space. But you have to make time for the quiet, for the silence, in order to get the knowing. And it's that knowing that you get in that space that puts you in this fire, this I am going forward, you know, and where are you going forward to? You are going forward in the energy of the fool. Like I am unafraid to not know, right? I'm going, I just trust. 
I trust. I trust in what I possessed. I have my gift in my hand. I got what I need. I understand who I am, what spirit needs of me, what they've gifted me with. We have the world here, right? And so this energy, this, 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 this going forward is about completion. You have completed one cycle of your life, which, which probably felt very 3D. And you are now understanding the other side of what you are. So we have completed something to begin something new. And this new is very, very much about spiritually connecting and tapping into that relationship that you have. Above the Queen of Wands, we have the Eight of Pentacles. So fours, what are you working on? What are you building? What are you establishing? What are your projects? What are your passions? Where do you want to invest your energy? At the bottom of, I'm, I've been holding this the whole time, sorry. At the bottom of the tarot deck, we have the Ten of Swords. And this is, Ten is about... Uh, an ending, but a beginning, right? So one is the beginning, but zero is a circle, right? So this is a circle, but the circle also has a new beginning. And so we are beginning a new cycle. And so that's what the Ten of Swords talks about. Swords is about in our mind. And so those birds are all flying away in a certain direction. And so whatever has been in your mind that is now leaving, that is now going, is 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 necessary because you are moving into a new space. The Ten of Swords and the Seven of Swords. So the Seven of Swords is about doing something in secrecy on silence. Now we can this this can be an energy for good or for evil. But but let's just think the Ten of Swords and the Seven of Swords in the traditional tarot deck, this is Ten of Swords in the back and this is someone sneaking away with five swords, but leaving two to make you think, you know, that something other than the truth is taking place, attempting to deceive you. So we have deception, betrayal. And so maybe this is not everybody's story, but nonetheless, you know, because of what you've experienced and because of what you now know you are moving towards and what you want life to feel like, I think one, it's important to move silently, right? I think sometimes it's to be discreet. It's to keep ourselves pinned up nice and tight, um, to really keep our journey as personal as possible. I always feel that way when I see the seven of swords, right? Just realizing that in this space, you know, typically I don't move in silence. I don't have secrets. I don't, I don't operate in the unknown, but because of what I know, because of, because of the lessons that I've learned, you know, I now know how to move. But this is also about that energy leaving your life, right? This is also about realizing that, that, that all the, the karmic, yucky, nasty, you know, just just not fun energy was a, was a necessary part of our story. And it propelled us towards our spiritual gifts. And it is the lessons that we've acquired from our past that is now telling us that guess what? Whatever we are working on, wherever we put our energy, it is moving us in a new direction. And where is that direction taking us? Where do we want to go? What is important to us? Right? This energy is going alone, right? But the world is open. The world is open to you. And I mean, it could be physical travel, but it can just also be in your own creation, in your own efforts. Anything is possible as a four. You can literally build and establish anything. What is that? What is that for you? We have the Five of Cups. And this talks about... You know, five talks about change. It talks about freedom. So something in our life has to be left behind in order for us to move, to grow, to expand. What do you have to leave behind? Is that a behavior? Is that a habit, a belief, a mindset? Is it a person, a relationship, a thing? It is something that you have emotionally connected yourself to. 
right? But we don't want to stay in this space of leaving something behind and, and just reflecting on it to the point that we don't know that the possibility for more is right behind us. And so this is where spirit is saying, listen, we want you to focus on building whatever it is you're creating in life and something may have to be separate from you. Maybe you do have to establish a boundary, right? Spirit talked about you being kind and loving towards others, but also creating boundaries. In order to have this freedom and this change, it requires you to set up a perimeter around yourself to protect your emotions, your heart, your space. Um, but you have to know that in changing yourself and changing your behaviors, it's really about protecting yourself for what comes next. You know, the six of cups comes after is, is about innocence. And so sometimes in order to get back to that sweet space, that sweet spot within our heart, where we can just feel good and reflect and have memories and smile, sometimes th certain things have to go, right? Certain things have to shift. And so what changes do you have to make to protect the sweet spot in your heart? What is that? And please don't mourn whatever has to go because it's really securing you for what will stay. Okay, four. So that was a lot. I hope something in here was beneficial. Thank you. You are a warrior. Be fearless and stand strong. Thank you so much for stopping by. Take care.